Lymphocytes are part of the lymph system and part of the immune system. These are cells that are produced in the bone marrow. That's where they begin their life. And then, of course, they mature elsewhere. Um, if they are T cells, they mature in the thymus. B cells do continue in the bone marrow, as I mentioned. Lymphocytes are smaller cells. They have a large nucleus. There are no granules contained in the lymphocytes that are visible through classic right uh, gimsum stain, which is what we used in lab. And in many cases, the lymph system live out their lives, and I'm sorry, the lymphocytes live out their lives in the lymph system surrounded by lymph. Some of these will exit into the bloodstream as well. The classes of the lymphocytes are uh, primarily T cells, and they're going to be involved in what's called cell-mediated immunity. These are typically involving cell-to-cell -cell contact, and uh, we'll look at those processes a little bit later. Our B cells are primarily involved in what we call the humoral uh, mediated immunity or humoral, humoral immune, immunity, which is a throwback to um, the Greeks and what they used to call body humors. These, the humoral response involves the production of antibodies, and those are due to the lymph cell or the uh, B cells. And then we have these natural killer cells, which technically speaking are a type of T cells, but they're different enough that we're gonna put it in its own category. These um, are actually part of the innate immune system. T and B are part of what we're gonna call the acquired immune system. We'll talk more about that in a minute, um, in a few minutes. But uh, take a look at the numbers, T cells, vastly outnumber the B cells and the natural killer cells. In case stands for natural killer. Natural killer cells. And they are quite deadly and effective. Taking a closer look at these classes of lymphocytes, our T cells can be further divided into cytotoxic T's, helper T's, regulatory T's, and memory T's. Cytotoxic T's, as their name suggests, cyto means cell, and of course toxic means poison, and so a cytotoxic C T is poisonous to other cells. Helper T, again, the name says it all, these things don't actually kill anything. Instead, they're going to help regulate the cytotoxic T's, and they actually help regulate the B cells too. And we'll, again, we're going to revisit this, so don't panic just yet. We're coming back to it. Regulatory T's, uh, again, name says it all. These actually help regulate the immune response so it doesn't get out of control. And memory T's help us essentially build up an immunity to pathogens that we've already seen. Here's your B cells. When a B cell is naive, meaning it has not been exposed to its particular pathogen, um, it looks something like this, but once it's been exposed, it's going to differentiate into what we call plasma cells. And these guys here are going to just pump out those antibodies, and those antibodies will, of course, enter into the bloodstream and start uh, really wreaking havoc on the pathogens that are found within uh, the bloodstream. And some of these antibodies can be secreted in tears and other places as well. Now it's not shown here, but we also have memory B cells, and so we'll talk about those as well. And then our natural killer cells, as shown here, um, these are destructive cells. They will attack virally infected cells, cancer infected cells, and so forth. Now each of these, these cells are specific to a antigen and um, highly selective for their particular antigen. They don't respond to other antigens, and so you end up with these cells being activated by very specific pathogens, such as H1N1, which is a type of flu. It's actually swine flu. So a B cell that recognizes H1N1 will not recognize H2N3, which is a different variety of flu. 
And so it's important to have this selectivity so we can really search out and destroy what we need to destroy. Um, and it's a hallmark of these lymphocytes.